Welcome to episode 53 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this episode, I talk to Annalisa Safiotti from Berlin in Germany. I started out by asking Annalisa how she got into sourcing. I was kind of by chance. I remember that I was in Senegal when I first applied for the job uh, at N26 as a tech sourcer. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know what that was. I knew that I was interested like, in see how a tech company worked, like working a startup was something that it was there in my mind, but I didn't think that I, I didn't imagine really a career there. I was in Senegal and I was doing like, I was working for um, a non-profit project as a civilian servant mm-hmm. and the project wasn't going well as I expected. Like why I went there was because I was very interested in working in the um, international cooperation sector, like humanitarian head, which is something that I really enjoyed, like, and like from personal perspective was very, very good. But then like the implementation of the project was a little bit slow and I wanted okay. something more fast paced. Also like the, the partners we were with weren't really following us on the project so I was it wasn't only me it was like I was with three other people and then we decided to do something different the, the, the idea that came to me was like starting mapping the organizations the local organizations there in the area of Ziegenshore which was where I was based to create a sort of database of like um, for people that were interested in like doing partnership with them so what I liked there and what is like connected to sourcing is kind of the match between like a need and like um someone is looking for something yeah right so um as i said i didn't know what sourcing was the, the but then when i applied like i discovered a little bit more throughout the, the interview process because at the beginning i thought that it, it involved also like asking questions doing interviews and like in my first experience not even now i've never done interviews to candidates but like um mostly what i'm being focused is just like researching and like reaching out to people to then generate candidate generate candidates um also like what i really liked and i didn't know that it was like sourcing it was like just finding the right information like looking at uh, like for i don't know stories profiles like stories of life and like some people even like of my friends say but why are you so curious like what the, what the where does this curiosity bring and i really didn't know back then before starting this job but then actually that curiosity was helpful afterwards i can say um so yes, this is how I like I started like sourcing when I got the job, the, my first job in Berlin, and I moved from Senegal to here directly, and I started working for like a, a quite big hyper growth company. It was quite strange for the beginning, even at the beginning, like considering the the switch from a no profit to a like a <laughs> mobile bank. You can uh, you can see, um, but like I wanted to really understand how life in a tech company is how like a company like a startup grows Mm -hmm. and becomes something organic that's like what fascinates me about like sourcing it's like it's not just like uh, reaching out to people or finding talent it's about seeing how an organization is growing how the business is growing thanks to the people that enter in this business and this like my the fact of being there and working in house gave me like a privileged perspective to my curiosity like i could see i could see how where the business needed some like uh, what was it looking for i was looking like mostly finding looking for engineers at the beginning and then how the team like they were like growing then they were those who were building the product yeah so like a product that we normally use on our daily life um yeah that, that's it and then i like when i was there at n26 i also like i initially like focused on the just on technical role back-end roles uh software uh, back-end engineers 
and then I moved to like to a broader uh, range of roles. Where did you kind of go to learn or who did you learn from on where to look and how to look and yeah, kind of what processes to use and sourcing? I didn't have any proper training, I must say, because I think um, the, the approach in, that I experienced like uh, during the, the time I was there, but like not only there, it was just, okay, we need more candidates. And there are like, these are the way I like had to write these keywords and like with these keywords are, you will find a certain profile. And I understood a little bit of the Boolean logic before because I did something at university, but it doesn't take too much either to like to get the logic. But it's not even like knowing the keywords that like bring you to the, the right finding, right? So I would say that the biggest like way of learning um, was really challenges by challenges and mistake. Mm -hmm. So having some constraint, the fact that um, I didn't have anyone to learn from, so I had to look for information like by myself. And also like um, with the people like, um, I don't know, like I didn't participate in the hiring uh, intake meeting there. Yeah. So I just had the requirements from the recruiter and then had to look for right people that like in, in my perspective, there were just profiles. Mm -hmm. And then it was towards the end of my experience there that I decided to, to change approach totally. And I really tried to understand what the role was like, uh, what all this term meant. Like, yeah. what is like, uh, I don't know, uh, what does it mean, data warehouse? What does it mean, ETL? What does it mean, like, what is the correlation between JavaScript and another framework or, or like uh, another like programming languages? So it was like really my, my effort to try to understand what I was looking for that then helped me a lot to to become, I would say, quite successful in my, my searches then. Like, and what I think is very important, I mean, I'm, I'm not that experienced compared to many sources because I have only two years. But once you have like an understanding of what you're looking for and you know what kind of question you have to ask to the search engine, then things can go much easier. You don't need, I, I think that it, I don't need to to look for the most extreme tool to scrape data and information because first I have to look, I have to know what I'm looking for. And besides that, the, the just, just the requirements, what is important is also like the, um, the availability of the, the, the person that I'm looking for. So um, th there's no point to just, look for people that just joined a job. I mean, it can be like, you never like exclude chances, but you also have to take in consideration the, the background and the pattern that there is behind, I think. And then of course you have to be able to reach out to people in, a, in, a, in the right way, because if you don't engage them, you can buy like a, a thousand of like good profiles, but then it's like, you have nothing there. And what kind of tools are you using today then? Like, do you have any kind of go-to tools or, or favorite tools that you use? I work mainly with LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I also use Amazing Hiring, especially for like uh, cross-search. I mostly reach out to people on LinkedIn though. I mm -hmm. don't even use the, the, the email. And besides LinkedIn, uh, I do a lot of company search. So I use also Glassdoor and I go and check the reviews there because like if like a company with a lot of people that like quite bad review that can mean something that maybe there are good people that are not really happy where they're working, where they're currently working. Uh, as well, Google Play, something that I use because it's, uh, I can like, what are the like latest app and who is like producing them as well. I once used, I, I also use some community, but like not really to source, mostly to, to understand the community, my target, like can be Reddit, can be Discord, but I'm very silent. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what it's called a lurker in this case. <laughs> and specifically with Germany, like I'm, I'm sure lots of sourcers and recruiters out there has either had roles where we had to source in Germany or for Germany, 
uh, you know, what's, what's your secret? What was your biggest learning to kind of get either find people in Germany or get people to move to Germany? Get people in Germany? I think like the company search and like Glassdoor can be a really good tool. They can both be really good because they are indicators or like what kind of talent is already there. Uh, what I notice also is quite hard to let people move from a city in Germany to another city in Germany. So I lately have been mostly focusing in Berlin only because there are already a lot of talent. There are already a lot of people that moved here and were joined like other very good companies. Um, so th I think that should be my first target. Like uh, the, um, I don't see why I should look for abroad, like for people abroad, especially in this time that is like, we don't know really what is going on. Um, so right, the, the logic that there is behind is really trying not only to understand, like to, to, to know the right keywords and like find the people. It's like to understand the context where these people are and then like target them. It sounds like a little bit harsh, but it's just like, <laughs> um, for people that are looking for like how to get people to move to Germany. Again, LinkedIn is a very good tool here because there is that feature like open to new opportunities and open to relocate. So that it may be quite granted and easy, but I first used that because I've seen when I tried to reach, like before I was really reaching out to many people without considering, uh, is this person willing to, to move? Like what are the indicators that tell me that this person is going to like get back to me because maybe people got back, but they, they didn't, they didn't want, right? The approach that I use is like spending more time, um, researching rather than more time messaging. Mm -hmm. I continue searching till I find the people that are more willing to, to move. And of course, if I don't find them, I can also like, re I reach out to other people, but like there, the message like matters a, more, a lot, the kind of like how you reached out to them, because even if they're not in want they don't want to move right now, maybe they will consider it in the future. Mm -hmm. So there are, again, also indicators. If that person has lived already abroad or has already re relocated, maybe that person is more willing to, to move again. And what's your secret in terms of messaging? I try to edit my templates a lot. First, I have like a, sta temp a, st a standard message. I have like a standard and customized message. I have like a message that I customize completely. I even try with not with connection request. And I have the follow-up as well. So it depends a little bit on the availability of like people that are there um, as well on the um, importance of the role because I don't want to miss the opportunity to get someone's attention by sending like, a message that it like look the same as like thousands of others that they may receive. So I really spend time again. I prefer like taking the time rather than like continuing doing the same thing forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So like the, even the, the, temp, the, the subject line is usually quite long and detailed for me because maybe they don't want to read the, the, the whole text because I, I, I usually quite lengthy. I'd say there are like 1000 characters in my message on average. So it's not like super short, but I try to give as much information as possible in the, the subject line. So they already see if it's something that they can be interested or not. Because also what I think is important is really try to respect the person you're trying to talk with. So if that person is not interested, like I don't want to sound intrusive. I don't want to sell the next amazing opportunity because I believe people are perfectly able to understand what they like and what they're interested in. So my, my goal when I reach out to them is just to let them aware there is something out there and they can actually be like a good fit. And then it's up to them if they want to continue. No, I, like, I give them the chance to, to learn more and to connect with, with someone in, in my team. That's, that's what I do. I like the first like part is addressed to them exclu exclusively. And then I write just two or three lines about the company and I have the, like a PDF document where that they can find more information than I ask if they're interested or not.
that usually work. And, yeah. and I've seen um, more and more sourcers and recruiters moving to Berlin. Um, what's kind of your experience or what's your advice for uh, people who, you know, are considering moving to Berlin and looking at the market there? What, what would they need to think about? And, and how was your experience of, of coming from outside and moving to Berlin? From a personal perspective, it was quite good, I would say, because I had already people like that I knew from my from when I was a teenager that were living here. Mm -hmm. So it was quite easy. Um, but also, I think that the the company here they try a lot to to make you feel part of like of something of a, of a group. So also the relocation processes are really often with thoughts so they they also include some advices of like where to go and how to like explore the city from a sourcing perspective again i would say the 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 first thing is really to understand the local market to me really and there are like a thousand of way like you can like check on TechCrunch or like uh, dear room or like any list of like startup and companies in berlin because if you know the market you you are more aware of what you're looking for and how you can get someone's attention. That's um, of course also there are a lot of meetups meetups as well and the and I, I I've been in at some and they were quite interesting I would say. Um, but my I don't know my my advice is like really try to understand the market. And try also always to be human because you're not really talking to a profile. This is not like related to Berlin. You're not talking to a profile, you're talking to a person. So you have to understand what are the, what's the psychology behind, what are the, the, the connectors that make things work in this sense. I can tell you that it, this is like aside from sourcing, but it was in 2014, I'd work at a um, TV production and I did an internship there and my job was basically to look for real cases that happen in Italy of like violence against women. Mm -hmm. And then besides that, I also had to reach out to the families and to the, um, the lawyers of the family of the victims. Even though this doesn't seem really related to talent acquisition, in some ways it is because that you, you know what you're looking for. You're looking for like, to connect to those family, to those lawyer, and you cannot miss the opportunity to say the, the wrong message. You have to know how you will, like you're gonna like find the contact, and then how really to communicate with those people in the in the right way. And uh, Annalisa, if, if people want to stay in contact with you and, and follow you where you go, how can they best do that? Uh, LinkedIn is the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have other social network, but I I'm very silent there, and I prefer to to keep a low profile over there. <laughs> no worries. Look, thank you so much for your time. Um, I look forward to meeting you soon again. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.